Zand, I'm about to do a red blood cell experiment and I need a plate of donuts that I left here. Donuts? Well, I don't know anything about a plate of donuts. Really? It was a plate exactly like this one here. It's just it was full of uneaten donuts. And this seems to have little scraps of eaten donuts. Well, I'd love to help, but you probably just forgot where you put it. Maybe. Unless, of course, someone's eaten them. This is not the moment for these baseless accusations. It's time for Investigation Out. Did you know you have around eight pints of blood in your body? But what if you lost a lot of blood in an accident or your blood had a disease? This is the Bristol Blood Centre, and it's full of blood that has been donated by healthy people to help patients. In this room is almost half of England's blood supply. Wow! The blood here is given to patients through bags like these directly into their veins. It's called a blood transfusion. Now, the most of the time, this works very well, but just occasionally, their immune system starts to reject the blood that's been transfused into them. So, the researchers at Bristol have developed an amazing way to make blood that won't be rejected. Part of that team is top scientist Dr Ash Toy. So, Ash, what are you doing here in this lab? We're taking a portion of normal donor blood and we isolate the stem cells in that portion of normal blood and we grow more stem cells from that, which we then turn into red blood cells. This blood grown from stem cells is purer, so it won't get rejected by its recipient. That's amazing! But what are stem cells? Different parts of your body are made up of different types of cells. They're everywhere, in your blood, your brain, and even your hair. Stem cells are your body's spare cells, which don't have a job yet and are waiting to be told what to do. What's brilliant is that scientists like Ash have found a way of doing what your body does naturally in a lab, turning stem cells into red blood cells. In this slightly unremarkable looking flask, there is almost a miracle of modern science taking place. How do you make sure that these cells become red blood cells? They're in a really rich nutrient solution that helps the cell know that it wants to be a red blood cell. This is a real image of a stem cell, and every stem cell has a nucleus in its centre, but red blood cells don't. And there's a reason for that. They have to be tiny enough to squeeze through the smallest blood vessels in your body. So the first thing that has to happen to a stem cell if it's going to turn into a red blood cell is it needs to lose its nucleus. To demonstrate this, I've had to get some more donuts. I've still no idea what happened to the other ones I bought. If you have a cell with a nucleus and you try and squeeze it through the blood vessels, you can see it doesn't really work very well. You can get it in, but it damages the cell pretty badly. If I remove the jam, sorry, nucleus, it'll turn into a red blood cell. So that's ended up as a sort of squashed disc shape. And that's a special shape that the red blood cell has to have to be more flexible. And it is a tight fit, but it'll get through and remain undamaged. So it can squeeze to about half its size because you no longer have that nucleus in the way. So that is why red cells have to lose their nucleus. Let's take a look at this under the microscope. There's an example there where you can see these cells with no uh, dark nucleus. They are basically red blood cells. The hope is that in a couple of years, patients whose bodies reject donor blood will benefit from this pure lab blood made from stem cells. And this is the final product. This is 100 billion red blood cells. It might not look like much, but this is the most that anyone in the world has ever managed to produce from the stem cells of a single donor.